When the asteroid struck the Earth 66 million years ago, a chain of extremely deadly events were set off in the following seconds. Growing up, I always felt that I had the time to do whatever I wanted, and as I've made my way through my 20s, that feeling has changed. If you were to stand in North America and stare up at the night sky 66 million years ago, you would first see what would appear to be a very bright star in the night sky. Standing there for a couple more hours, the star would slowly grow bigger and bigger, until eventually it would look as if it was barely moving as it only grew brighter. And then the next second, everything would end. What you would be looking at is an enormous asteroid approximately 12 kilometers wide barreling towards the Earth at nearly 45,000 miles per hour. Soon the monstrous meteor, known as a Chicxulub asteroid, would easily shoot through all 62 miles of the Earth's atmosphere in less than 5 seconds, screaming over Central America and slamming into the Yucatan Peninsula. Immediately following the asteroid asteroid's impact would be the mother of all sonic booms that would shatter eardrums in California, vaporize life in Florida, and shatter glass in Peru. Before landing, the asteroid would fall so fast that even air itself wouldn't be able to escape, and the air would compress so violently that it would instantly become several times hotter than the sun, vaporizing the surrounding sea, allowing the asteroid to plunge straight into the bedrock. The asteroid itself was so large that, even at the moment of impact, the top of it might have still towered more than a mile above the cruising altitude of a 747. The falling meteor applied such extreme pressure to the rock and soil that it caused them to flow like liquids, as it transferred its kinetic energy of 1 septillion 300 sextillion kilojoules into heat, causing not just the air, but the surrounding soil and rock to become hotter than the surface of the sun. And this impact, with the asteroid nearly breaching into Earth's mantle, would have a massive rebound of Effect. That would look much like the double splash that occurs when throwing a large rock into a pool, as over the next 10 minutes the delayed vertical splash that occurs would send the molten earth rebounding over 1,000 miles an hour to heights taller than Mount Everest. At the same time, the superheated air within seconds would be ionized into an expanding wave of plasma turbocharged with vaporized rock that is blasted outwards in all directions at hypersonic speeds. As the shock wave from the impact of the meteor itself forms a blast wave of pressure that expands outwards at more than 1,000 miles per hour, radiating across the seas, over coastlines, and deep into the continental interior, taking most life in its path by surprise as a silent killer. Anyone standing close enough to see the asteroid hit would be instantly vaporized. The initial impact of the asteroid vibrates the Earth like a bell, generating a seismic shaking of impossible levels, comparable to a magnitude 12 earthquake that's more more energy than the elastic strain that the Earth's crust can handle. This earthquake would be easily felt on the opposite side of the world, and would feel like a magnitude 9 earthquake everywhere else on the planet. It would have felt like the ground beneath your feet had become a ship in the middle of the ocean. The impact likely triggered an immense amount of volcanic eruptions around the globe, possibly bathing countries like India in lava. Tsunamis around 1500 meters high would soon rush around the Gulf of Mexico engulfing the eastern seaboard, with smaller tsunamis soon scouring every coastline around the world, sucking anything along them back out to sea. As dangerous as the tsunamis were to life, far worse was the searing heat. The asteroid essentially punched a hole in our atmosphere, and as the atmosphere moved to close this hole, over 25 trillion metric tons of excavated material were ejected into the atmosphere, all within a second or two of impact. Some of this material was sent outwards into space, while others, called spirals, shot back to the Earth, some as large as school buses, but most being the size of marbles, carrying a colossal amount of energy with them, as they heated to incandescence upon re-entry, bathing the entire Earth in an intense thermal radiation, effectively setting the planet on fire, and burning down nearly every forest, out of everywhere that the asteroid could have hit on the planet. The asteroid by chance happened to hit an area rich in sulfur and oil promptly vaporizing the sulfur and ejecting upwards to 500 gigatons of it into the atmosphere, which then condensed into massive storm clouds and slowly fell back to Earth as acid rain. Even more unfortunate is the ejected oil condensed high above the clouds in the stratosphere, making it unable to rain down as it covered the Earth in a black, oily blanket, blocking almost all sunlight from reaching the burning planet. From here, as the Earth's atmosphere heated, the blazing fires that wiped out the planet's forest 
forests were quickly followed by a period of extreme cooling. As the atmosphere choked with dust and soot from the wildfires, mixed with the oil, instigated a sudden global temperature drop as a permanent freezing winter set in for the next few decades, causing the most severe environmental blow to ensue, being the almost complete shutdown of all plant life, leading to an utter collapse in the food chain, and the quick starvation of any surviving species. Save for the few tropical islands of Madagascar, Indonesia, and our lava-covered India that managed to avoid the global chill, receiving less than 10% of the sunlight they used to for a few surviving plants to survive on, they were also the only places left on the planet to receive any fresh water as evaporation nearly ceased everywhere else, turning the rest of the planet into a chilled desert. Most species were almost instantly wiped out within minutes of this event, but the asteroid also created the necessary conditions for life to recover, producing a deep hydrothermal system, providing a foothold for life to essentially reset on Earth. Also interestingly, scientists for the first time seem to have discovered where the asteroid came from, and what led it to destroy the Earth, helping them discover if such an event could ever happen again. It's pretty miraculous what transpired for us to even be here, as the dinosaurs weren't going anywhere until a freak accident set up by Jupiter and the Sun changed the course of our planet, and now you're watching this through a screen rather than a dinosaur still roaming around where you sit. Our solar system is enveloped in a massive bubble-like field of debris called the Oort Cloud that occasionally has one of its pieces bumped off course by Jupiter's gravitational pull that sends the piece of debris, or now comet, hurling very close to the Sun, where the Sun then speeds up the comet and breaks it into smaller pieces due to the Sun's tidal forces. These comets, called Sun Grazers, take nearly 200 years to orbit the Sun, and on their way out of the Sun's gravitational pull, there's a chance they might enter the Earth's orbit and strike the planet. Thanks to Jupiter acting like a pinball machine, the chance that one of these many comets orbiting on the outside of our solar system crosses the Earth's orbit and slams into it is increased by a factor of 10. And looking at the Earth's history, these once fragments of the Oort cloud are estimated to strike the Earth every 250 to 730 million years, as other massive craters made out of the same material, being carbonaceous chondrite, are shown to have struck the Earth 2 billion years ago in South Africa, making the largest crater in Earth's history and in Kazakhstan in the last million years. So hopefully we have a while until another one is sent our way. This discovery is pivotal to humankind being able to tell if such an event were to threaten the planet again. But if you found that none of this was very interesting, then I saved my most intriguing piece of information for last. A new theory has been proposed, saying that the massive comet from the Oort cloud was pulled away not from Jupiter's gravity, but due to a plane of dark matter circulating around our solar system that pushed the asteroid out of the Oort cloud, with a single particle of dark matter being powerful enough to alter the climate of our planet in strange ways if we were to ever come into contact with it. As in our next video, we go over the bizarre world that Earth was after the dust had settled from the asteroid, so subscribe so you don't miss it.